The modern world was built by science, from medicine to agriculture to transportation to communication. The importance of science in our lives is undeniable. And yet, sometimes we do deny science. Not all science, of course, which raises important questions. What is science denial? Why do we deny science? And how can we avoid being fooled by denial? I'm Melanie Teresa King from Thinking is Power and the Mental Immunity Project. And in this video, we're going to explore answers to these questions and more. Science denial can be a touchy subject, but if we don't want to be fooled, we need to understand how it works and why we fall for it. Science denial is the refusal to accept well-supported scientific conclusions. Denial is often motivated by not wanting to accept findings that conflict with our deeply held beliefs, values, identities, or desires. And so we demand impossibly high standards of evidence. Conversely, pseudoscience is motivated by wanting to believe, and so we set a very low standard of evidence. None of us like to think of ourselves as denying science. So we convince ourselves that we're being skeptical. After all, scientists are skeptical. But skeptics proportion their acceptance of claims to the available evidence. Rejecting strongly supported scientific findings isn't skepticism. It's denial. If our goal is to base our decisions on reliable evidence, denying science can be harmful. So it's important to be aware of our motivations, biases, and emotions. That said, sometimes powerful groups use denial campaigns to confuse us about science that threatens their interests. For example, the tobacco industry manufactured doubt about the link between smoking and health problems to avoid regulation. Fossil fuel companies used the same strategy to convince us that the science of human-caused climate change wasn't settled. If these industries actually had evidence to support their position or disprove the consensus, they certainly would provide it. But instead, they sowed doubt on the evidence and the scientific community to create an illusion of controversy and to cut us off from reliable sources of information. Importantly, denial campaigns are a form of disinformation, which is false information that's deliberately spread to deceive us. Those who fall for disinformation are victims. Nearly all science denial uses the same techniques, summarized by the acronym FLIC, fake experts, logical fallacies, impossible expectations, cherry picking, and conspiracy theories. Learning to spot these techniques can help you identify and avoid falling for denial. Most of us trust scientists and recognize the value of expertise. And we're especially likely to accept a conclusion if we know that experts overwhelmingly agree. So for denial campaigns to be effective, they have to create an illusion of disagreement using fake experts. The strategy can take various forms. The magnified minority amplifies a small number of dissenting scientists, sometimes even those who are outside of their area of expertise, to create an impression there's a significant debate within the scientific community, even when the consensus is overwhelming. For example, if 10 professional mechanics told me that my car was in danger of exploding, but a plumber told me it was safe to drive, it would be foolish to trust the plumber and ignore the consensus of mechanics. The fake debate gives equal weight to both sides of a scientific debate, even when one side is supported by overwhelming evidence and the other isn't. This can mislead the public into thinking that there is genuine scientific controversy when in reality the consensus is clear. The point is, an expert consensus is the most reliable form of knowledge available at any given moment. So don't let fake experts convince you otherwise. Fallacies are flaws in arguments that can lead to false conclusions. While there are about a gazillion of them, there's a few that are commonly found in science denial arguments. The ad hominem fallacy attacks the person instead of addressing their argument. For example, anti-science arguments often accuse scientists of being greedy shills who are being paid by the government or industry for their conclusions. 
While there have been rare cases of scientists letting conflicts of interest bias their research, the scientific community has rigorous mechanisms in place to root out misconduct. Ad hominem attacks rely on perceived motivations, not evidence, to undermine the credibility of experts. The straw man fallacy misrepresents an argument to make it easier to defeat. Since it's difficult to deny strongly supported scientific conclusions, denialists often resort to distorting or even exaggerating science to make it appear less credible. For example, someone might argue that a strongly supported scientific consensus is the most reliable knowledge available at any given time. To which someone might respond, so you're saying experts are never wrong, so we should just listen to them and not think for ourselves. See what I did there? I strawmanned my own argument. The appeal to nature fallacy argues that something that's natural is better or safer than something that's unnatural. But not only is natural difficult to define, a source of something tells us nothing about how safe it is. There are unnatural things that have greatly improved our quality of life and natural things that are very harmful. For example, the smallpox virus is natural. But in the 20th century alone, it killed over 300 million people. Conversely, the unnatural smallpox vaccine is considered one of the greatest public health achievements of all time, as it was the first time a disease was completely eradicated through human intervention. The Galileo gambit falsely compares those who deny science to the 20th century astronomer who was prosecuted by the church for stating that the sun, not the earth, was at the center of the universe. But Galileo wasn't opposing a consensus. In fact, many astronomers of the time thought he was right. And it wasn't scientists who accused Galileo of heresy. It was the ideologically motivated church, as they didn't like the implications of the earth not being at the center of the universe. Impossible expectations is the heart of science denial. Remember that denial is motivated by not wanting to accept scientific findings that conflict with important beliefs, values, and so on. And so we set our standard of evidence impossibly high. Even more, when presented with evidence that we're wrong, we avoid changing our minds by moving the goalposts or demanding even more evidence and higher standards of proof. Denial campaigns often try to convince us that science is uncertain, isn't settled, or it's just a theory. So there's no reason to take action. But science is never 100% certain or completely settled, and a theory is as close to certain as scientific explanations will get. This technique packs a one-two punch. It exploits a common misconception that science results in absolute proof, and it uses one of science's most important characteristics, the willingness to change with evidence, to justify not accepting strongly supported scientific conclusions. But by this logic, we would never accept any scientific findings. Making excuses to protect cherished beliefs is a hallmark of science denial. If we don't want to fall for denial, we need to be honest with ourselves about our motivations, emotions, desires, and so on. Cherry picking selectively chooses evidence to support a desired conclusion, while ignoring or dismissing evidence that doesn't. Imagine a cherry tree where each of the cherries represents a piece of evidence for a claim. If our goal is to determine the truth of the claim, it's essential to look at the body of evidence, or all of the cherries on the tree. It's possible to carefully select individual pieces of evidence, especially anecdotes, to support nearly any conclusion. For example, the overwhelming consensus is that smoking is harmful to our health. But quitting can be difficult. So instead, someone might deny that smoking is harmful by pointing to people who smoked their whole life and were just fine. The point is, if we cherry pick, we might miss the forest for the trees. Conspiracy theories are the foundation of nearly all misinformation, including science denial, as there is really no other way to explain why basically all of the world's experts disagree with our preferred position. They must be a part of a hidden agenda, conspiring for greed or power. The problem is, conspiratorial thinking is a trap. 
Conspiracy theories are immune to evidence, meaning all evidence is interpreted to be a part of the conspiracy. And so evidence itself is moot. Missing evidence was hidden. Contradictory evidence was planted. And so on. Also, the assertion that scientists are conspiring to hide the truth is loaded with flaws. Science is extremely competitive. The incentive structure rewards those who discover something new or who disprove a long-standing conclusion, not for agreeing with what others have already found. Disproving settled science is the best way for a scientist to win a Nobel Prize and go down in history books. And have you ever tried to keep a secret with a bunch of people, especially a really juicy one? The larger a conspiracy grows, the likelier someone will talk. Benjamin Franklin famously said, three people may keep a secret if two of them are dead. And now to the elephant in the room. Yes, there are real conspiracies. But we know about these conspiracies because of critical thinking and evidence. Conspiratorial thinking traps individuals in a cycle of distrust and undermines evidence-based reasoning. Science is a reliable way of learning about the world. It can help us make wiser decisions for ourselves, our families, and our societies. Unfortunately, sometimes findings conflict with important beliefs, and we deny or distort evidence to protect our worldview. While we're perfectly capable of fooling ourselves, sometimes we have help. Denial campaigns exploit our vulnerabilities to confuse us about well-supported science to protect their interests. By being aware of our motivations, emotions, and desires, and learning the techniques of denial as summarized by Flick, we can avoid being fooled by science denial. <laughs>